today's lesson, um, we're talking about solving harmonic motion equations here in section 5.6c. Um, so example one, uh, we have a Ferris wheel that has a radius of 10 meters and the bottom of the wheel passes one meter above the ground. The Ferris wheel makes one complete revolution every 20 seconds. Um, we want to be able to find an equation that gives the height above the ground of a person on the Ferris wheel as a function of time, starting when the person is halfway up on the right. B wants us to, while on the Ferris wheel, you can see the nearby mountains when you are above 15 meters in the air. How long would you be able to see the mountains while on the Ferris wheel? Okay, so we have a couple things here. Now, anytime that we've been talking about harmonic motion, you want to always draw a picture first. So, here's my Ferris wheel. The best Ferris wheel I could probably draw. Well, that's perfectly fine. Okay, now your radius of your Ferris wheel is, let's make that line a little bit more horizontal, 10 meters. Okay, it also said that a person passing, like the wheel passes above the ground, just a meter, just one meter there. Okay, so one thing I like to do with these kind of pictures is kind of map out heights. Um, so on one of the sides, I go to the height, I go to the bottom here, kind of make a line, and then also map out all the other important stuff. So like here, from the ground to the bottom of the Ferris wheel is one meter, and then from the bottom to the middle is 10 meters, and then another 10 meters from the middle to the top. So if I was to label this, I would say that the bottom is at one meter, the middle is at 11 meters, and then the top is at 21 meters, okay? So it kind of gives us an ability to kind of draw a graph here as well. Now the graph, you don't have to do. It's more so like a sketch, okay? So I'm gonna use it to kind of help me draw like a decent picture or like a sketched picture of my graph when I'm all done, okay? So then the next thing is that you're saying that you wanna start in the middle, okay? Now in the middle or halfway up the ride, that would be like, if you, cause you get on at, at the bottom, that's where you get on the ride and then for a while you go like move up because other people are getting on the rides, right? Uh, so somebody else and you kind of keep working your way up and so you're at like the middle when the ride actually starts, okay? So that would suggest looking at my map that I am currently or you are currently at 11 meters in the air. So you would at time zero, and these are kind of talking about time, not so much like a radian measurement, okay? time value. So at a zero time before the ride even starts for you, you're at 11 meters in the air. Okay. And then from there, after a certain amount of time, you're going to be at different spots. Okay. Now you kind of want to figure out where you are in relation to everything. So, um, up here, it says that it's 20 seconds to go once around. So starting here, going all the way around, it takes 20 seconds to kind of get one full rotation. So if I was thinking of time starting at zero, the length that I'm looking at is 20 and I'm gonna be right back to where I started at 20 seconds. So this is where like when we're graphing, we wanna divide this into equal parts so that I can graph a logical thing. So at like the top, how long would it take me to get to the top? Well. If there's a top, that's one, middle again, bottom. So that's like four positions. So that would be 20 divided by four. So it takes me five seconds to get to the top, which would be at 21. It would take me another five seconds to get to the bottom or to back to the middle. 
and then another five seconds to get to the bottom, and then another five seconds to get back to where I started, okay? And so looking at this graph here, hopefully you can notice that this function looks a lot like sine, okay? So when I'm writing my equation, I'm gonna start filling in the gaps here. So sine is what I want, okay? Now I have a lot of other things that I'm gonna need, All right? You're gonna need your key value. You're gonna need your vertical shift, phase shift, um, and amplitude as well. So we can kind of start piecing this together because we've built stuff already from a graph. Um, so then now, looking at my graph, it looks like I start in at 11 meters. So then remember that is like your equilibrium, so your starting point. So that is how far from zero you are to start with. So I would say that your vertical shift is 11, okay? Um, now, since you're starting in the middle, and this is a sine graph, and you're going up next, I would say that there's no phase shift because you're not starting like you haven't shifted your graph over five or anything like that. So I would say minus zero there. Okay, Amplitude is the distance from the middle to either the top or to the bottom. So it looks like because your circle is the radius of 10, that would be your amplitude. And then the last thing is figuring out what your cave would be. Now you've been given your period. Um, and so then I would take 20 and set it equal to our ratio of two pi over K and then solve. So cross multiply here. So 20 K equals two pi, divide both sides by 20. And that gets me pi over 10. And then there's my equation right there. So I have letter A already done. Okay, now letter B, now this is where we wanna show, I've kind of shown you how to do these um, in the last video, I'm pretty sure, or hopefully I'll get to show you in class with a graphing calculator if not. Um, but for these, I wanna show you more algebraically how to solve these. So. It says, while on the Ferris wheel, you can see the nearby mountains when you are above 15 meters, okay? So I wanna know how long can I see the mountains? So how long am I above 15 meters on the right, okay? Now, if you're looking at our map here, it's either like right around there or right around here. So there is a definite point where you are above and then when you stop being above that, Okay, so we kind of want to know what that time period is, but it's not really broken up any better than that. So let's take our equation that we just wrote, and because 15 is that marker, I want to solve for 15. So I want to know where those intersections are, because if y is equal to 15, then setting it equal to the equation that I get and figuring out those intersections is my best course of action. So, now I don't need the minus zero part. I can just write x here. That'll make my equation a little easier to write. Okay, now from here, now I wanna solve. So, I'm trying to get kind of the sign isolated first. So I want to subtract 11 from both sides. Gets me four. Okay, and then divide by 10, that gets me 0.4. Okay, so then from here, um, now this is where what we did in section 5.5 five is gonna help us out pretty nicely, is I'm gonna use the inverse. So that was like the only way to get the sign away from your that radian measurement and x. So I'm gonna take the inverse of sine to both sides. Okay, now one thing we kinda of talked about with um, 
inverses is that there are two possibilities that give you 0.4. And so on your calculator, how you would go about this is you would first do sine, inverse sine of 0.4. Make sure your calculator is in radians here because um, degrees won't be very beneficial as um, we're talking about time and those kind of values. So degrees will kind of skew our answers. So I get 0.41, okay? And I'm gonna set that equal to pi over 10 times x. But now I need to know where the other answer is. So think of where sine is positive for an angle, okay? And then you would find yourself in the first and the second quadrant. So 0.41 radians is in the first quadrant, okay? Now how I know that is if I took pi divided by 2, that's 1.57. So 0 0.41 is less than that, so I have to be in the first, okay? Then from there, now I can kind of flip over it. Well, I'm in the second, so the nice thing about sine and angles in the first and the second, they're, um, supplement, or they're complementary to each other. So I can take pi minus 0 0.41 on the calculator, and then do pi minus that. And that gets me point, or sorry, 2.73. So that's the other angle measurement, okay? And now I can solve both of these and they'll be solved the same way. So I multiply both sides by 10 over pi. Okay. And so then now I'm going to get the answers of um sorry 1.3 and 8.7. I'm going to round to the 10th. Just make it easier, okay? And so those are representing seconds. So from sec from 1.3 seconds all the way to 8.7 seconds you'll be able to see those mountains because you'll be above 15 meters on the Ferris wheel, okay? So if I'm writing this, it wants an interval, kinda. So I want to put this in interval notation. So from 1.3 to 8.7, I would be able to see um, the mountains, okay? Now notice it said above 15 meters. It didn't say at 15 meters and above that's why I don't have brackets here, okay? So parentheses meaning at 15, I'm probably in between being able to see them and not seeing them, okay? Let's try another one. So example two, 